I'm at uh, Ever Junction, just north of Newport. Uh, I'm standing on a railway bridge and uh, behind me is, uh, is the junction where the trains from uh, the South Wales Main Line head up towards Ever Vale, passing up through risk of a new bridge and on up to Ever Vale. But if I'd been here at the back end of 1943 and 1944, it's very possible I would have had an American soldier with a pointing a rifle at me, asking me what on earth I am doing here. Because this was the home and the workplace of the 756th US Army Rail Shop Battalion. And what I'm going to attempt to do is tell not just the story, but also look at some of the legacy that they left behind. So thanks to the wires and the fences, it's not very easy to see, but the depot would have stood roughly over there. It had uh, 12 tracks, it had a wheel press, a lathe, a transverser, it had a blacksmith forge, it had a tin forge, and basically any tools that needed to be made, they made in the blacksmith's forge. They were very, very unprepared. Half of the battalion was stationed uh, here, the other half were uh, over in Hainault in Essex, and when they arrived, they billeted them in Tredegar Park, which is a very large public park just down the road from here, whilst the other half went up to Caerphilly, and that's where they stayed. And that particular group lived in Caerphilly, billeted down there, came down to the workshop each day, and they even bought a hot meal down from Caerphilly uh, every lunchtime at 12 noon. There is some distance between the two. So why was depot codenamed TC203 set up? Well, in the first few years of the war, it's fair to say Britain's railways took a bit of a pounding and they could really do with some locomotives. Enter the S160. This was a standard build locomotive, a 280 large locomotive, which would take passengers, it would take freight. It was made by a number of American railway companies, including the American Locomotive Company, Lima, and one or two others. They shipped them over and they arrived in Liverpool and went to the London Northeastern Railway Depot in uh, Doncaster and were unpacked, commissioned, tested and then lent out for running in, was the official title, to the four big railway companies around the country. The LNER, the LMS, the Great Western Railway and even the Southern Railway had half a dozen of them. There were another 400 made and they were heading in this direction and that's where the 756th came into play. They arrived in Cardiff docks, in Newport docks, and they were then transported over here to Newport, to Ever Junction. They were unpacked, tested, commissioned, and then put into storage. The idea being is to build up a bank of locomotives that could be used in Europe when the Allies basically invaded. This photo here taken uh, the back end of 1943 shows some of the S160s having been assembled and stored in the yard actually at Ebber Junction. But there were more locos to come and Ebber Junction was full. Where on earth do you hide 400 large steam locomotives? Now north of Cardiff and Newport there are a number of valleys and those valleys are full of coal and in the 1800s a lot of people worked very hard to get that coal out on the canals and trains and down to the docks at well Newport, Cardiff, Penarth, Barry, and get it shipped around the world. What that meant was a lot of small railway companies set up or tried to set up lines all over the place and in the 1920s when they were all merged into one big railway company a lot of exchange sidings between these railway companies lay idle. What an ideal place to store some locomotives away from prying eyes. The first place they stored locomotives was a place called Tonteg. There were a number of lines going through that and they used the old Barry Railway Company line to store them. There were 96 locos uh, stacked up their line astern and there's quite a well-known photo that does the rounds on Facebook and whatever. However, I can't find the copyright for it and having seen it on one of the big stock libraries, I don't particularly want to get into that battle. The author, Eric Malford, as a team, was able to get up there and to had permission to go and visit the locomotives. He was told he could take down the numbers, but he wasn't allowed to count the number of locos that were there. 
Nope, nor me. Haven't got a clue how that one works. However, he did go up there. He did visit them. He spoke to the American soldiers up there and he saw them lying astern. He said, noted that one of them was actually the wrong way round. They would have been transferred from Ever Junction uh, up to Tonteg in groups of three and four, each locomotive having an armed guard on board. But that wasn't enough and they needed more storage space. And so they looked elsewhere and they came here. You who know my videos, you'll know exactly where we are. And this is where they found space to store locos. This is Penrose Cutting. And there was a line that came up here, which was the Romney Railway from Taft's Wells. There was one right over there, which was the Alexander Dock Newport Railway. And then the Barry Railway went on this viaduct, which you can see remains of over the top. But it also came down here. And this is exactly where we are going to go and find out where they put those locos. And this is it. Penrose Sidings Storage Site. This was where the Barry Railway met the Romney Railway and there was massive transshipment. And of course, once British Rail came along, Great Western Railway before that, there was no need for all this transshipment. So there was a lot of railway sidings available. Two on one side of the main running lines, three on the other. This is what it looks like today. But this is what it would have looked like then. They stored 170 locomotives here. Three on the one side of the track, two on the other. They started arriving in the autumn of 1943. So they needed more and they looked around on the maps and they found some more sidings they could use at Caddickston, which is near Barry. And another 80 locomotives went down there. So what with Tonteg, this one here at Penrose and Caddickston, plus what was at Ebbo Junction, there was an awful lot of S160s in store. The more eagle-eyed of you might have spotted when I put this photo up of Ebbo Junction that amongst all the S160s, there's a tank loco. This was a design called the S100, and it was again designed for um, multiple build across different builders. And again, they were designed to be shipped over here and to be used sort of uh, in Europe when the invasion happened. There was about between 80 to 100 of them came over to the UK through Weber Junction and through the 756. Some of them were put into use around the South Wales Valleys by the Great Western Railway. But there were a number put into storage. Unfortunately, the records of how many um, are not as accurate as they are with the S160s. However, we do know where. I made a video of, I mentioned the video, the viaduct that went over the top here. It kept going across another couple of viaducts and ended up near a place called Clambraddock. And there was some sidings called Dufferin Exchange sidings. Come the grouping and all these little companies become one big one. They don't need them anymore. They're sitting there doing nothing. Great place to store between 60 and 80 tank locomotives. And there they stayed again until 1944 when they got shipped over to France. But on top of the S160s and the tank locos, they also bought over some diesels. Now, it's easy in this day and age to say, oh, diesels, yeah, fine. What we have to understand in those days, Britain was, was a steam country. Yes, there were some electric services operating on the southern and around the northeast and around Liverpool, but they were units. And there were a few diesel rail cars, but diesel locomotives, very few, far between, a few switches, and that's about it. So these things really would made of a few heads turn. The first ones they bought over were small General Electric 45 tonne switches and they also bought over 10 70 tonners as well. And then there were the Whitcombs. What do I hear you cry is a Whitcomb? Well a Whitcomb was this 65 tonne twin engine locomotive made by the Whitcomb Locomotive Company who are a subsidiary or were subsidiary of Baldwin. They were quite well known in the States, but over here, no one heard of them. People have heard of GE, but certainly not Whitcomb. They had two Buddha engines and were quite powerful. And according to an eyewitness, the diesels were unloaded in crates, unpacked, assembled, shipped over to Ebba Junction. The cylinder heads were checked, they were commissioned, and they were tested. It's that word tested, which is quite interesting. According to the eyewitness account, 
they were run for 11 miles, driven by an American army driver with a GWR pilot, and they would have been driven between Ebba Junction up as far as Risca and would have come along this line. I'm at Roger Stone Station on the Ebba Vale, uh, Ebba vale line. It would have been twin track in those days. You can see over there where the second track would have been. But you imagine sitting on this station and all of a sudden you hear thud, 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 and you think, what on earth is that? You will have never seen anything like this in your life. And all of a sudden this dirty, great big diesel comes through. You must have wondered, even for World War II, what on earth is going on? They were put into store at Ebba Junction, though a couple of them were taken down to the Longmore Military Railway. The premise was that they wanted British soldiers to be able to learn how to maintain them and look at them. So two of the Whitcombs and one of the GEs at least went down there. Um, I actually think they just wanted to have a bit of a nose, because this was like cutting edge technology. We also know that one of them, uh, one of the Whitcombs was tested um, on a train between Swansea and Newport. They had 14 hospital carriages and a dynamo car, dynamometer car, which is 15 coaches. That's quite a long train. And they were a little bit disappointed that it didn't make the speeds. Yeah, I mean, these things probably weren't designed for that sort of thing. But a couple of them have shown um, in later times that two of them put together actually could haul some quite significant trains. One did go to Swindon to uh, be used by the Great Western Railway to uh, check a lift there, a loco lift there. And one of them went up to Penrose um, and it was used as a switcher to move some of the S160s around. So they didn't all just sit in storage. Some of them did actually get a little bit of an outing as well. On the 6th of June 1944, the Allies invaded France. They quickly established a beachhead and took hold of the Cherbourg Peninsula. They started shipping the locos that were in store at Ebba Junction. This is one of the GE 45 tonners that was stored here and came through this battalion. And this is likewise one of the Whitcombs being unloaded. This X S160 being swung by the crane onto the docks is one of the ones that's in storage at Penrose. And likewise, this one was also in storage at Penrose. I have no idea who the high ranking officer is, but they've scrubbed that engine up beautifully. And this is the 741st rail battalion who were looking after it. I bit the stores emptied at Tonteg, at Caddockston, at Penrose, at Dufferin, and here at Edward Junction. The battalion packed up and headed for France. It was the 6th of October 1944 and 756th US Army Railway Shop Battalion left Ebba Junction and headed for Marseille in the south of France. Slightly better climates probably, but they made a significant contribution to the war effort in helping with the logistics that pushed the armies across Europe. What happened to all these locomotives? Well, the S160 was an incredibly popular design and they kept building it even after the war. There was a version called the S161 that actually got exported to Jamaica because it was a five foot gauge one and ended up working on the Jamaican railways. They got sold to places like China, Iran, Egypt. They got sold to Austria, Poland, Hungary, all sorts of different railways who used them because their own railways were absolutely decimated by World War II. And so when it came to the preservation days, the pickings were fairly easy. This particular logo I took a photo of in 1980. It was at that time at the Mid Hans Railways unrestored. Uh, it's now at the Chernet Valley Railway in Staffordshire and they have this one which is uh, they're putting back together again. They've also got two operational ones which they use on regular occasions including on Santa specials. There's one at the South Devon Railway in Devon and there's one at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway in Yorkshire. But what are the ones that came through Wales? Well there are three. There is this one in Thessaloniki it was, uh, went to the Greek railways and uh, it's now in storage there, but they have used it to run rail tours in the past. And then there's this one, which is on a plinth at Hadban in Hungary. Again, this one went to the Hungarian railways and there's plans to one day restore it. Both of these were stored at Caddockston, but of the ones that came through Penrose, 
there is one back in this country. To be fair, it's a kit of parts and there's a dedicated team of volunteers who've been working on it for some years now to get it restored. But it's at the Nottingham Transport Centre, what was the Great Central Railway North. And uh, I've linked their Facebook page below. Uh, if you're passing, drop in, give them a wave, say hello. Uh, I think they'd appreciate the, uh, the encouragement. But what are the tank locomotives? Well, there are five I've been able to find information about. There are three in the Greek railway collection both in Athens and in Thessaloniki. There is this one which is stored in a museum in France. But then there's this one. It's in regular service in a museum collection on a railway in the Netherlands. Stormtran Hus Basella, and I will apologize profusely for my Dutch pronunciation. However, hold on to that word, and those words, and this place, and maybe popping up again. And what about the diesel? Were any of those preserved? Well, it's been fair to say it's been quite easy to track down the S160s and the tank locos. Um, Wikipedia has a big list of the S160s and a website called project62.com lists out all the S100 tank locomotives. But the diesels have been a little bit harder to track down. Now we do know a lot of the diesels were sent back to the United States, but the GE70 tunnels were bought by uh, a railway in France called, and I've got to read this out, the Société Générale de Chemin de Fer Économique. They entered service in France, and at the end of it, three of them got preserved. Two of them are actually at the Chemin de Fer Touriste de Rhine, and uh, 7232 is in service, and this one, which is 7237, is currently undergoing restoration. Further south near Bordeaux, 7233 is on the Train Touriste de Gite Marseille. Yeah, I did refer to notes, but come on. <laughs> of the 45 tonners, again, looking through all the records, I know that one of them, 8502, passed from the army to the navy and then on to the marines, and in 2013 was put up for sale. I have no idea whether or not, whether or not it actually made it into preservation. If you do, please let me know. And what about the Whitcombs? Well, again, tracking those down has not been easy. We know that they went back to the States. I found a couple around in various, uh, various works, various cement works, and uh, managed to sort of ascertain that some of the Welsh Whitcombs did actually make it through the war and back to the States. 127 was purchased by the Chicago Gravel Company and was in service right until the sort of 1970s, until it got scrapped. And this one, 7966, was purchased by the South Brooklyn Railway and operated as a service engine for that tramway. In 1955, it was sold on to American aggregates and there the trail goes cold. Now, ironically, another Whitcomb that replaced that Whitcomb on the same railway did enter preservation. It's in the uh, New York Trolley Museum um, and they have a great video of it firing up on their YouTube. I'll, I'll put a link down below. Um, but even though it was the same batch with the same serial numbers, this one never actually left the US. And they directed me to a, a museum down in Florida. So I looked this one up and they do have a Whitcomb again, the same batch, the same model. But again, sadly, this one wasn't one of the Welsh Whitcombs, which is an amazing shame, real shame. Why? Because the place where the museum is in Lake Wales, how amazing would it have been to be able to say that a Welsh Whitcomb retired to Lake Wales? But it was not to be. Which brings us back to the railway I mentioned earlier on in the Netherlands, Steam Train Horse Pusella. After the Second World War, the Dutch railways bought 10 Whitcombs and they used them to help rebuild the country. All 10 were scrapped, but the railway wanted to have an example of this locomotive and started searching for a relevant example. They found one in a cement works in Iowa who very kindly donated it to them. The railway crowd funded its transport, and this is it in its US military livery. Now sadly, this loco would have been one of the ones that was shipped directly to France and wasn't part of the batch that passed through Wales, but it's exactly the same as those that would have gone through Epper Junction. As a result, the railway has an S100 tank and a Whitcomb, both in wartime colours, which I think is quite a fitting tribute to 
the soldiers who served in these US Army Rail Battalions uh, right across Europe and beyond. I went into a bookshop and I picked up a book that told the story about this particular battalion from one angle and it led me to literally mailing and receiving contact with people from around the world and thank you to everybody. I normally make videos about viaducts and tunnels and old railway lines within South Wales but having read this book and having found out more about this battalion I kind of think their story needed to be told. Until next time.